Hello and welcome to the lecture series discussing the historical Bible. Today we will be dipping into the very surface of archaeology and how it can be used as support for the validity of the Bible. Beginning with what the practice of archaeology is so that everyone can understand and define it, we will then take a subject from the Old Testament particularly the kings of Israel and Judah, to explore what evidence is available. Subsequently, we will also investigate the artifacts relating to Jesus as our New Testament subject. Our goal is to develop a sound argument based in substantial ancient objects for the Bible as a historically accurate book. Thus, archaeology is the study of human history, primarily by literally digging up the past. One thing to make clear is that this is different from paleontology, which considers rocks and animals, most notably dinosaurs. Instead, this is the process of excavating a tell in search of artifacts that help us learn about past civilizations who lived in a specific location. The word tell is referring to a landmass, such as the one displayed in the lower picture, which is a man-made hill built up as one people group destroys another. Though our society clears away the debris to make room for the newest thing, ancient peoples saw this as an advantage to build on top of the former city for higher ground. Throughout the biblical lands and even in other locations in the world, there are many tells. Only 1% have been unearthed and plenty yet to be disclosed to the world. The upper picture is a tell that has previously been excavated. Some of the artifacts that come out of those dig sites end up in museums if they have any particular significance. And in the case of the kings of Israel and Judah, there are quite a few objects on display. With 42 Old Testament kings who ruled in the land given to the Israelites, we would expect there to be something left behind, at least by a few of them. As it turns out, the divided kingdoms did leave a trail of breadcrumbs several of which you can see here, with the Tel al rima stele referencing Joash, the black obelisk recording Jehu and Omri, Kirk monolith commemorating Ahab, and Shema's seal, which alludes to Jeroboam. Then we have the Esarhaddon prism listing Manasseh among kings, and Jeconiah's ration tablet referring to Jeconiah, and Jehoiachin. Each of these are among a list of artifacts that mention by name at least 16 of the kings who will e learn of in the books of Kings and Chronicles. Grounding these men in history as well as biblical accounts, turning the stories of 42 characters into real accounts of kings who ruled in the ancient world. While we just gave an overview of the monarchy of the Israelites, I want to take a moment to consider two specific artifacts and their associated kings, Hezekiah and David. Though the discovery that considers the reign of Hezekiah is unable to be housed in a museum, many people are still able to tour through the Siloam Tunnel. This tunnel is a waterway that is connected to the Gihon River and is dated to circa 700 BC. If we look at 2 Chronicles 32, we see that when Sennacherib came up against the city of Jerusalem, Hezekiah had all the access to water stopped up to thwart the Assyrians. Yet this left them without water as well, so Hezekiah commissioned a tunnel that connected to the Gihon in order to provide water for the city. As for the most renowned biblical King David was practically mythical, considering his feats and fame throughout the Bible and the world. This was particularly because he there was no reference to such a great king anywhere to be found until 1993 when the Tel Dan inscription was discovered. Expressing in Aramaic, a common language among Jews, the line which is translated of the house of David. 
This inscription was likely written around 250 years following David's reign and is referring to one of his descendants, though none mentioned by name. Finally, we have confirmation that the man after God's own heart was a historical figure. As we have considered the Old Testament, it is time we consider the new, specifically surrounding the most central figure of the Bible. In relation to Jesus, we can examine multiple archaeological finds, two of which are the Nazareth inscription and the Magdala synagogue. The Nazareth inscription is a tablet which contains an edict from Caesar that is dated around the middle of the first century AD, most probably during the reign of Claudius. While it was found at Nazareth, it is unclear where it was originally located and possibly belonged to another city. The importance of this edict is that it explicitly prohibits tomb robbery as punishable by death. Some believe that this may have been a response to the claims that the disciples stole Jesus' body, because while grave robbers would loot treasure stored within, it would be quite absurd to steal the bodies out of the tombs. The significance of the synagogue, or even the one located at Magdala particularly, is that many historians believe synagogues to have been created after the fall of the temple in AD 70, which would have caused an anachronism between history and scripture, which claims that Jesus, who departed from the earth nearly 40 years prior, taught in synagogues. But this is not the case, since as of yet there have been at least 10 synagogues unearthed that are dated to the early 1st century. Instead of a weak supplement for the temple, which they serve as today, they were more of a meeting place for studying the Jewish scripture and discussing among rabbis, allowing for a better understanding of Jesus' time spent teaching in the synagogues and affirming the presence of such locations in the proper time frame. Continuing on the theme of Jesus, we can explore articles connected to his death. In 1990, the Caiaphas ossuary was found in a burial cave south of Jerusalem. Within the ornate box, there were six sets of male bones buried in the Jewish fashion, which would have all been from the same family. As you may see on the side of this box, there are some etched Greek words which translate into the inscription Joseph, son of Caiaphas. Caiaphas being the family name, there is a remarkable consideration as this particular high priest was addressed by his last name rather than his first. Given the dating of the box as late first century, it would have placed this particular Caiaphas in Jerusalem around AD 30 and in prime position to have been high priest who presided over Jesus' execution. Speaking of executioners, Pontius Pilate is directly confirmed by an epitaph which was used in commemoration of a dedication of some sort in Caesarea by the sea. This stone is dated to circa AD 30 and, though partially unsalvageable, contains the Latin dictum including Tivis Pilatus, which translates into Pontius Pilate, or at least the second half of his first name and the last name as well. While our third artifact has no words, there are many things to say about the heel bone of a man who was crucified at Gevat Himitvar. To begin with, it confirms the practice of nailing men to the cross as depicted in all four Gospels, specifically around the time period of Jesus' crucifixion as well as the small details of bending the end of the nail to prevent it from dislodging, but also preventing it from removal after death sometimes as well. In fact, all three of these artifacts add important pieces of information as confirmation of Jesus' death on the cross. In review, we analyzed the practice of archaeology considered the men who ruled throughout the Old Testament, and investigated the context of Jesus' life and death. One final thing to note is that Jesus' life did not end in death, and that his resurrection can be supported by many eyewitnesses who were willing to die for their faith. Therefore, we may have confidence in his death and resurrection, which save us from our sins.
As we have viewed the evidence, we can come to a reasonable inference that history is in agreement and lines up with the Bible from an archaeological standpoint. Thank you for listening to this presentation on the historical Bible, archaeology. Here is my bibliography and photograph references.